Last time, while fulfilling my duties to clan and country, I, Valgar, was falsely imprisoned, but managed to work out a deal for my freedom, and that of my two new companions, I suppose. But upon finding my only side of a meal ticket may have been taken by the assiduous jailer, Warden Questor, I led my two new associates back to the jail to investigate. Upon arrival, I attempted, as an upstanding gentleman such as myself does, to gain entry through the direct method of knocking on the door. When that turned out to be a fruitless adventure in some investigations of windows by Lorarian and Freeman, I decided that since Quister had not respected my person, and likely had wrongfully held Brian as well, that I didn't much care for regular decorum in this case. And thus we opted to go around the prison building towards the quarry itself. My friends made an, an attempt at scaling the fence around the perimeter. I needed not to do something so menial, and burned the hole right through the fence. If Quester was to be so disrespectful, a little property damage was the least I could do to show my displeasure. Before we entered the quarry, though, there was signs of someone traversing it and entering the middle tunnel. This made sense, as it was the tunnel we had taken earlier that day, and so any foul experiments would likely require a similar path. And so we took that path back towards the unusual chamber we had fled before. Inside was a most curious scene. Questor was there, with both Brian and Orin Daychild. I had intended to meet up with Orin in the morning, but somehow Questor had acquired him for likely similar reasons as to his acquisition of Brian. There was also the body of one of the guards off to the side. Todd, I think. He had clearly been killed in some manner before our arrival. The, that detail is important. It's clearly it meant neither myself, Freeman, or Lararen were responsible for his death, and thus, if it was foul play, we were all three innocent of that crime. How things played out next was rather quick. Questor was happy to have us arrive, as it meant he could take Freyman hostage. He got to demanding that the wizards use some sort of magic, just in general, knowing the likely result of such would be some odd reaction with the rocks around us. I decided to make good use of Questor's obvious ignorance of the reactive nature from earlier and to exploit a potential fear. As such, I began to act as if I was somehow associated with the strange magics of the cavern perhaps possessed or attuned to it somehow. <laughs> I gave Freeman quite the lick across the face to ensure Quester was more concerned about me rather than anything else going on, to consider me the only real threat. I mean, I could easily have let him just cut Freeman's throat, but I decided the utility of being seen as a do-gooder and having a sidekick for such is always quite useful. Especially if such a sidekick praises you for saving their lives in front of others, which perhaps Freyman might in the future. Besides, Freyman had amused me with his reactions to things such as magic before. It is rare to meet someone so sheltered and excited at the same time, and occasionally anxious to the point of paralyzation. Besides, Quester had insulted me several times over already, and I was hardly going to let him have his way at that moment. Yes... And so, the moment Questor took his blade away from Freeman to threaten me instead, the fool, after a good bit of acting on my part, keeping up the suspense, making it seem that I was somehow a bigger monster than, well, anything else in the area, I decided to strike. Now, I was mindful of the strange nature of the cavern. As such, I did not opt to use my natural abilities, but instead my reliable blade. The melee resulted quickly began to turn against Questor, especially after Lararen began swinging his stick at his skull, and so Questor began to flee. I should note that my focus was almost entirely on Questor, and as such I didn't quite notice at the time any stirring from the corpse of Todd. I followed Questor out of the chamber and pursued him as fast as I could, doing my best to make sure that he heard my knife scraping the walls as I went. I wanted him to know that I intended to not just kill him, but to, to do horrific things to his body. 
Though at the time, I was actually mostly interested in maiming him a great deal to, so that you know, he'd be able to suffer the rest of his days and as a cripple, unable to perform a single feat of magic to his lack of fingers, tongue, and toes. But that dastardly half-elf <sighs> dimension doored away. Further than I could hope to catch up with him without expending more than I was willing to at the time. So I turned back and returned to the cave. Upon my return, it appeared that Todd had not only risen from the dead, but had become quite the monstrosity. Teeth and bones everywhere. But Lararian and Freyman had the situation generally under control. However, the reactive power of the cavern had been activated, and so the focus quickly turned to getting the captured wizards and ourselves to safety. We left the cavern as the blue light began to seep out once more from the walls and proceeded straight back to town. On our way in, we had taken a bit more of a cautious path and moved across the farmland, but our stay of affairs was a little less urgent and my companions were in not as great a shape. So the main road it was. We went immediately to the Temple of Palor, which was where we met up with Derek, Freeman's uncle, I think it was, and he was the priest there. There was also a delightful tiefling named Constance there, who was more than happy to listen to some of my previously used cover stories. Always good to get to practice in. But anyway, we told them about the misdeeds of Questor and the dangers of the mine before getting half a plan together for the next day. Freeman and Derek talked for a bit on their own. I did know that the kid was a slightly different temperament after, but I can't quite figure out what had changed. Though I suspect seeing a familiar face had brought a lot of comfort. The Raren, all smiles and joy as usual, was happy to go to bed. I fell asleep telling Constance my stories, the words coming out automatically as per usual, as my mind began to ponder Questor's game, his wants and desires, and if he was a threat to myself or my important, vital tasks. I didn't quite have an answer, but the next morning I'd have that answer. We rose and I took some time to get cleaned up. Still having an interest in harming Questor, I took a moment to savor the blood of his that had stained my knife. He had dried, but I didn't mind. After some stretches and making sure my companion was aroused, I had intended to go meet up with Orin at the inn to catch up and get up to speed on the situation. I had learned by this point that Orin had been tracking Questor and called in his favor with me to solicit my help with him. However, I didn't make it back to the copper flask that morning, nor did I have to explain myself to Garmin Glassman why I was back. Instead, my companions had gotten a little distracted at the market near the temple. Lorraine apologized to the seller she tried to swindle, though perhaps by accident, the day before. And there was much opportunity for sweets and vegetables for all and whatever. Food, breakfast, it was all nice. But then I saw him. Questor the Slime, sneaking into the main guild hall just off the market. I alerted my companions that he was not only still in town, surprising me as he seemed like such a coward, but trying to do business as well. The Gaul. Each of us had ideas of what to do, and so we began to engage our plans. Freyman went off to get help, eventually locating some individuals who worked for the Crimson Arm, and not Town Guard, who, for all we know, were part of Questor's enforcer army. In the local area. Lorarian followed around the building to try to find the back entry where we suspected Questor had entered, and to make use of that entrance himself. When I heard later, the result of this action was a little embarrassing on Lorarian's part, and may have involved jumping into the side of a building. I kind of wish I had been there to see that. I, on the other hand, being a reasonable person, went inside and requested to see Questor. As I did so, I met a most delightful lady named Karen Rose, a human with dark hair, a little older than I, perhaps, but still quite young and full of vitality. Someone who clearly had climbed quickly as not just be some random peasant, but a respected member of the community and one of the key players in local craft guild politics. Her focus was clothworks, and from the examples she showed me while I waited for Questor to be summoned, uh, it was clear the local product was of sufficient quality to catch my interest. I started bouncing between ideas on how to make use of the local production and pondering if Karen might be receptive to a more personal solicitation. But my meeting was interrupted with the arrival of Freeman and the Crimson Arm mercenaries. Freeman, as you may recall, can get a bit anxious about some things. 
and when he is anxious can get quite rather insistent. And so instead of waiting for the process of the guild hall to play out as, to, as it should, you know, trying to track down that deadbeat quest door a little more directly, all too soon. And then we found him. And then we were promptly accused of murder.